a, a little, uh, it's not a rant, but it's a uh, thing that struck me. I was, I went to somebody's book and uh, on, uh, on Kindle, on the Kindle store. And of course it's got all the uh, blurbs, blurbs on the front. But of course what passes for recommendations on books is often blurbs from other authors. Uh, which I find I pretty much usually just kind of skip through. It's like, uh, and I try and find like, you know, okay, what does Kirkus Review say? What does the Washington Post, what does the Guardian say? And I mean, even with those, I mean, they're trying to sell the book, so they're not going to, they're not going to uh, take a blurb from uh, somebody who said, this book sucks, don't buy it. <laughs> they're going to take the ones that people who responded well to the book. Um... But it does annoy me to to see all, uh, to usually at the very top it's clustered, it's all the kind of famous name authors. I, I remember there's a good good streak in there at least where uh, Neil Gaiman would have, he was very, the, the hot, the hot name to have as a blurb on your book. And I mean, I guess that's him being um, generous as one author to another is that he would blurb a lot of books, but uh, I couldn't from the limited sample size that I did, uh, it was never particularly a good indication of whether I was going to enjoy the book or what the kind of quality I thought the book was. I mean, he quite, I would take, you know, Neil Gaiman's word that, you know, he, he honestly felt good enough about these books to give them blurbs. And I mean, for other authors too. But I think it's one of these things of like, um, you get the you get I get the sense from a lot of authors, a lot of um, artists, in in variety of places that it's like fuck the critics, fuck the critics. I hate the critics, um, which is kind of fine because I don't think the critics are for particularly the artists, the writers, the directors, the actors. I they're not for them. Uh, they're for the people on the other side, the people who are like I'm not friends with them. I don't go to the same book conventions. I don't work with them on the same movies. You know, I don't have uh, some kind of other relationship outside of the work that is going to in some way influence me. Uh, that might even that might even extend to the fact of just being like it's a fellow author and I'm kind of keenly aware of exactly how hard it is to write a book. I mean, I think I've tried and failed many times to write books, so I have, I have a vague idea of, of how hard it is to write a book. That said, whether it was an incredibly hard book to write, whether an, a guy, an author was able to toss it off on a weekend uh, and it just pl plopped out, um, the effort behind it as a reader uh, doesn't make a difference to me. Um, whether the uh, the author is a really nice guy, really nice woman, uh, nice person, doesn't really matter to me. I'm not going to sit down with this person. I mean, as much as maybe that decency, that um, sensibility comes through in the writing, it makes a difference. But if the person smells in real life, it doesn't matter. I'm not smelling them. I'm just re I'm reading the words. I want to know if they can... If the, what their language is like, what their storytelling is like, uh, how they put things together on the page. That's sort of all I care about. I, I care about the end result. And I think I find with a lot of these blurbs is that a lot of them do smell of, oh, this is somebody who's my friend and I blurred their book. Or this is somebody that I see a lot on the book circuit and maybe they've blurred my stuff or they've blurred other friends of my stuff or, you know, I'm going to bump into them a lot and it would be kind of politic to give them a friendly blurb. Um, and even if that's not even a conscious thing, there's got to be just, there's something in the back of your head about that. Um, something I kind of value about uh, BookTube, about um, Goodreads and a lot of stuff like that is it's opened up the doors to a lot more very disinterested people who are just like, hi, I came home from work today, I plopped down and I read this book and I didn't enjoy myself, you know, I, and I don't care if, I don't care if Margaret Atwood is a 
really intelligent, smart, witty uh, dinner conversationalist who could have big sway over me if I if I start shit talking your books in public. It's like no, I'm 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 Joe Smo support worker who you know <laughs> not going to have any impact on me whether I make enemies in the literary world because I'm never going to be in the literary world. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I, I look at a lot of that stuff. Um, and I mean, in the Canadian context, you, you've, I've had in the past, at least when I've even bothered to read Canadian reviews, you get that painful sense that it's such a small pool that people are reluctant to shit talk. Uh, not shit talk, but, you know, be blunt and say this work wasn't that great and it's not really worth your time or it's just blah. People just are mealy mouth. And I, I've said that before. But, I mean, the good thing about um, opening things up to a lot more different people being able to talk and kind of infuriates authors, uh, but it's not for them. It's for the readers. And I think it makes for a much healthier thing. And I'm much more liable to pick up a book when I get, um, I've developed kind of relationships and knowledges of people online who are genuinely independent reviewers who aren't, aren't invested in anything other than the book, the, what's on the page. Um, and you know, we all have our preferences and things like I'm going to respond to a book that another person's going to think is shit. Hopefully through a review or through a variety of listening to me on things, you can go, oh, okay, he's, maybe he's okay if the language isn't too precise and he's more of a story guy, or oh, this person likes character and doesn't give a shit about fast-paced stories, or, um, you know, whatever, whatever the kind of kink is, sometimes uh, that, 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 that is valid. It's just the, the ones where you just feel like, oh, this is... This is someone a part of a group that is going to give happy, glowing blurbs, and it's not really useful. All right. Well, that's me babbling about that. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I when I when I look at blurbs, I immediately skip all the fellow authors because they are kind of it's 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 the fraternity, and they're 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 going to for the most part uh, they're not going to. Um, they're not going. They're not going to be blunt and, and uh, honest about their fellows because they have to hang out with their fellows, and that would be pretty damn awkward to say, "Wow, your book really sucked," and then say, "Oh, hi, I get to meet you at some kind of some kind of authory thing." That would suck. And you know, when my book came around, I'm going to have a hard time getting blurbs if I if I'm very negative about other people's books. It's just not good business for them. So I totally understand that. But um, it's sort of annoying when those names are used to try and sell me a book because it has the very opposite effect, I find. All right. Well, good night.